So what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to share with you the 3 Singapore stocks that you can buy. Just a little bit of disclaimer before we move on. Okay. So the first stock that I want to talk to you about is Capital Land. As of the recording of this video, it is trading at $2.73. Now I'm not going to talk about the detailed evaluation because to properly analyze the stock, you need to look at a lot more things. But today, I'm just going to look into the financial statements, okay? And I'm just going to focus on a few key ratios. Basically, what does Capital Land do? If you are living in a cave, I'll give you a quick summary. They are one of Asia's largest real estate groups. And they have a portfolio of more than 100 billion, which is a lot. So it comprises of properties from different sectors, for example, industrial sectors, commercial sectors, and also residential sectors. Other than that, they are also into REITs and also business trusts. In overall, their brand is also well known and pretty strong. So you can see the target price going up to a conservative estimate up to the high over here, $3.90, okay? So you can see right now, Capital Land, if you zoom out into the bigger picture, it is testing the support over here. Can you see that? So potentially you might see the price bounce off from here. And if chaos breaks, it might break below this support, which I feel is not very likely. But if it does break support, it might go all the way down to $2. Revenue sales over the past few years. Overall, it has been increasing, but not super consistent. Net income wise, it is more consistent. You can see from 2016, all the way to 2018, it has been increasing. And if you see a drop in income for one year, it doesn't really matter as long as in the long term, in the big picture, it is increasing. Okay. Now, financial strength wise, can it sustain through hard times? Is it liquid enough to sustain through hard times? Liquidity wise, pretty healthy with current ratio at about 1.34. RE, I would prefer it to be a little bit higher. So the next stock that I want to show you is Kofu. I don't know if you know this. If you really don't know this, then either you cook at home or again, you live in isolation all the time. So it is one of Singapore's largest food and beverage company. So as you know, during Corona time, F&B is one of the hardest hits. Okay. But of course, people still have to eat. Lah. So even if it drops, it wouldn't drop that much because people can tap out, okay? Provided that it is still open, which I think right now not a lot of outlets are open. The target price, you can see it going up all the way to 80 cents, okay? Right at this high over here. So you can see that currently, when it comes to margin safety wise, it is at a pretty good place to get into. But of course, nobody in this world can predict the bottom. So if the stock does tank a little bit, once you bought it, don't panic. Because you're a stock investor, you're not a stock trader. Okay. Now the good thing about Kofu is that it also pays you dividends. So that's the good thing. And in terms of revenue growth, you see a pretty healthy growth since 2016. And it has increased recently as well. Because the good thing about Kofu is that they are expanding. They are opening up a lot of outlets. So they not only have outlets in Singapore, but also Macau. And also they do other smaller things like kiosks. Aside from food courts, they also have full service restaurants. And when it comes to net income wise, you see a drop in 2018, but that shouldn't be an issue, too big of an issue. Overall, it's still increasing. And cash flow wise, I would say it's not super consistent. I would prefer it to be more consistent. But if you look at the big picture, okay, put on your common sense hat. If I'm to ask you right now, name one Singapore food court brand. The first thing that most people think about is Kofu. And Kofu is very popular, especially among the middle income class. But of course, I know rich people, they also go to food court, go to Kofu, go to Kopitiam. So everybody basically likes Kofu, including myself. 0 0.95, not ideal, but it is not way too far off from my requirement, which is minimum one current ratio, okay? But good news is RE is looking good. So the next stock I want to talk to you about but some of you have asked me, Karen, can I look at bank stocks? Now, if you are a complete beginner, bank stocks would be more risky for you. If you're a beginner, you want to look into the consumer staple stocks. You want to look into the more defensive stocks. Now, Sengxiong is a good pick when it was at the bottom. But right now, Sengxiong is a little bit above the price where I want to buy it. So I didn't recommend you the stock. Sengxiong actually went up. Because people are buying tissue paper and now they're still buying tissue paper 
I don't understand. So when you think about bank, the big three banks in Singapore, which are the first three banks you think of? Most people are going to think about either DBS, OCBC, UOB. The brand is well known. But secondly, the most important thing is look at how it performed in 2008. OCBC has proven to be able to withstand not only a recession, but also an oil crisis back in 2015 over here. 2015 to 2016. So based on its track record of overcoming massive crashes and then rebounding afterwards, I would say this is one of the reasons that you should consider OCBC Bank. Target price, conservative estimate would be $13. Okay, my line is not straight, but conservative estimate $13. Okay. So revenue net income wise, you see an overall increasing in revenue, which is a good sign. Net income, recently they have reported an income of $4.87 billion. Cash flow wise, when it comes to collecting cash, 2017 they are having a little bit of issue. But recently, these few years, they started to recover from that. And when you evaluate bank stocks, like I said in the previous videos, you tend to see huge liabilities. And on some bank stocks, you see debt to equity ratio being more than one. Okay, I want to give you some very important investing tips to remind you. Okay, make sure you still perform your due diligence. Use my recommendation or somebody else's recommendation as a confirmation to your own research. Because even Warren Buffett can get wrong in a stock prediction. And also make sure that you buy stocks which you are comfortable buying. Okay, don't just buy any stocks that people recommend, including my recommendations. And most importantly, don't listen to the news because fundamental events will be priced in few months way before the news is released. So by the time you listen to the news, it is very, very late. And if you're a complete beginner, don't rush into the markets because I know some people will be like, Ken, you know, I don't have any knowledge in investing, but I really want to put money into a broker right now because now is a once in a lifetime. Okay, actually not lifetime, but once in a decade opportunity. I need to get in, you know. If you're a complete beginner, you know nothing about investing, you know nothing about stock market, no experience at all, then just put your money into them more. Okay, you still get your experience that way. And if you're an experienced investor, you invest with money that you can afford to lose. Remember, you're buying a business, you're not buying a ticker symbol on the chart. Just like buying 4D, buying Toto, okay? There are some news that are really shocking recently, okay? Straight times. With rates falling, some Singapore return investors loading up on that to buy stocks. Of course, if it works out for you, right? Then it'll be very good. But then, I'd want this habit to stick with you because if you do it one time, do you think that you will do it a second time? For sure. For sure. Then if you keep this a habit, you keep on borrowing money every single time you want to buy stock, it will become a habit. Then it just takes one market crash or shit to hit the fan. Then you lose all your money. Then you also owe other people money. Then what do you want to do? So just keep that in mind. Invest with money that you can afford to lose. Okay? For those of you who are still beginners, you want to learn basics of stock investing, I've done some videos in the past. I'm going to put it on the screen right now. But if you want stock recommendations, stock broker recommendations, I'm going to do that maybe in the next video or subsequent next few videos. So make sure you subscribe and then follow me to make all my effort worth it because this video really takes a lot of time to do, you know. Okay, so with that, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.